Hello everybody, I'm Matt, and welcome to this episode of Mopar Masters. Now, I wanted to go ahead and cover everything that uh, I was describing to a couple of guys about uh, uh, modifying a uh, 392 or and I later learned that this also fits a normal 5.7, normal, <laughs> uh, the 5.7 Hemi also in the Challenger. Uh, this kit was not made for the charger, but uh, I'm going to show you how to modify it so your charger can now be a mouth breather. Let's get started. Okay, so whether it's a Challenger, a Charger, or a 300, your basic intake system is always going to be the same. Uh, even from the 5.7 to the 6.4s with the shorter snorkel, and also the 3.6 liter with the wrap around to the throttle body over here on the other side. Everything is the same here on all of the uh, cars, on all the L body cars, I should say. So uh, I've already got the lower portion of this kit installed, but let's just go ahead and uh, run through it real quick and I'll show you how to do a uh, quick disassembly on this thing and get your old one out and get the new one in. Now this is real easy. You have an eight millimeter hold down bolt here, and it's just an eight millimeter head. Once you get that out of the way, this just pops off. It's just held on by these little pieces of rubber and these two stands right here. And you're gonna make sure you wanna get those uh, lined back up uh, when you're putting this back on. And this is our uh, PCV fresh intake tube basically what that does is uh, allows fresh air to be drawn into the engine through the positive crankcase ventilation system and uh, eventually it dumps it back into the intake uh, that's something else we're going to take care of here in the near future is a catch can install so catch that one all right now I've already loosened these hose clamps here I'm not going to take it off the throttle body because I'm going to say on these newer model vehicles it, I, I'm pretty sure they glue it. It it really seems like it's glued. So uh, we'll go ahead and take this clamp off here because we're going to be reusing the stock air inlet rubber. Now go ahead and just get your intake air temperature sensor connector. Kind of keep it out of the way so you don't damage it while you're uh, tugging and pulling because this is kind of a tight process here. I've made it a little easier for myself. And then the air box just slides right out. And this is the Mopar air box. Now you'll notice I have this plugged off. And the reason for that is this was made for a Challenger and it was made to draw through the headlight. Well, obviously the Charger doesn't have the same inlet that the Challengers do. So Right now, I have uh, just a couple pieces of Gorilla Tape in there and just seal that portion off so we're not drawing any hot air from anywhere in the uh, engine bay. That's what we're eliminating with this kit is no hot air being pulled in from the engine bay anywhere. So, we're going to line up our air inlet tube with our air filter housing. And wow, that went on pretty easy. And I noticed this is clocked a certain way. There's a piece of rubber on the air intake tube and that coincides with this notch. And what you wanna do is look down into the bottom and make sure that you're lining everything up there. And at this point, you can go ahead and install your uh, eight millimeter hold down for the air filter housing. Now, pretty much the same thing on this. You'll notice the notch cut out here. And then uh, also you'll notice on this band clamp that we have a couple of raised sections here. And that's just to keep your band clamp from rotating around while you're installing and while you're tightening. And that one's just gonna be a pretty easy drop in. Go ahead and wiggle it on and it'll fall right in that groove when you get it right. There we go. Now we will uh, not forget to tighten that up. Now in your kit, you come with uh, you have a couple of fresh air inlet tubes that you can choose from. One of them is for the 5.7 liter. One of them is for the 6.4 liter. 
and you'll notice it's already pre-sized bigger on one end than it is the other and we will pick the one for the 6.4 liter and we will install it right here so now that we've got all that stuff installed that was the easy part i uh i will mention that is uh that is the simplest part of this build because the rest of it is going to involve some modification and if you're not ready to take a cutting wheel and a deburn tool to your hood then <laughs> you may want to look away it's, it's it's not as bad as what i make it sound but the uh the main thing is being very careful where you cut and also we're having to drill some extra holes obviously you don't want to drill your hole too far because then you're going to come out on the top side of the hood with a nice pretty little dent or even another hole that you weren't planning on so we've got this installed let's get our air filter tightened up and it doesn't have to be tight just snug we're not tightening head bolts here we're just holding a couple of rubber pieces together now make sure that you are putting this right on top of that stand it's easy to get them off center but you'll know when you've got it there and just give it a quick pop with your hand and we're in okay that was the easy part uh, let's set up and uh, show you the rest of it from here on out. I'm going to be uh, hanging on to the camera and giving you a little uh, walk through of what I've done up here. So let's get to that. Okay, here's what we have underneath. Basically, this is a uh, rubber lip seal. And when the hood is closed, it will seal all the way around the housing. Riding a good positive seal so no air will leak in from uh, anywhere in the engine compartment because we're trying to eliminate hot engine compartment air. Now you'll notice I have my hood silencer removed. I've yet to trim around it and get everything lined up. So basically you'll notice we have this indentation here inside of the uh, snorkel. Now that bumps into a bulge in the hood and you can see it here there's a pretty large bulge right there that's not there with the challengers and uh, we had to uh, cut out a triangle piece back here that uh, basically just coincides with that piece right there and then of course run the deburr on it and up here the snorkels were too long they were actually about roughly about three and a half inches too long so uh, we had to cut them down we cut them down smoothed them up now obviously i don't have my lower part of my seal here so you can still see where it's pulling some hot air and you'll notice here is where i actually had to clearance out behind the hood scoop on each side because this piece is much wider than the opening in that hood is and uh, we'll get you some measurements and everything there uh, that hole is new that's to hold this piece in you can't see but back here there is another mount and the hole that they want you to use on the challenger you're not uh, you're not going to reach it on the charger so we had to drill another hole and that was one of those you better be very careful because if you notice here we are really close to the hood. There's not much there. So if that drill bit grabs and tries to keep going, you're gonna go into your hood. I recommend a step bit here. Uh, step bits won't grab and pull their self like a regular drill bit will. So we've cut these down and I'm gonna make a box here to completely seal all of this stuff off. You can see up here, where our snorkels actually come in. Uh, this kit uses, uh, it comes with a another insert for your hood scoop, but the insert is actually a lot shorter 
it's uh, a whole lot narrower and it doesn't fill the uh, the entire scoop so we are retaining our factory scoop but these are easily pulled out uh, if they're not cold uh, I prefer everything to be room temperature when I'm working with plastic and that goes for in my garage and when I'm in my shop uh, because hot plastic or warm plastic won't crack it's more likely to deform and flex and if it's cold well, it's just gonna break so there we are back there uh, there wasn't a whole lot of clearance and issues but I did have to bring about an inch and a half out of each side and one other thing is uh, I've noticed I'm gonna have to uh, bend this I'm probably gonna have to deform it a little bit so I can get a little closer here because if you notice not only did I have to drill another hole which I'm gonna get me a plastic plug and fill that up where it doesn't look quite as tacky uh, and I could reuse a stock hole in the hood but my only issue is I've got a little bit of a gap there and I was expecting that uh, I don't want to fill this gap up too much because I'm gonna put my hood silencer back in and I want a little bit of room there and then I'll go ahead and uh, tighten everything up here where that push pin will go all the way home and it will look a lot nicer uh, now I did have to drill this one out this is also another just a push pin Christmas tree fir tree whatever you want to call it and if you'll come around here you can actually see where I had to trim the hood out to make that fit and basically I just cut a little triangle out of there nothing uh, nothing major but it was either trim the hood or it was gonna be flatten the top piece of my air intake and I really didn't want to do that because I thought that would restrict my airflow and uh, obviously that's not something we're trying to do as you can see the air comes in through here in the back and then runs along here well I didn't want to flatten that piece out uh, just because that would restrict airflow and I want all the airflow I can get so I went ahead and clearanced the hood behind here and basically all it was was just uh, cutting a triangle out in this bulge that I showed you earlier the Challenger does not have so uh, that's my basic rundown of it for now once uh, I get back in the shop and we've got some winter weather coming up so we may actually have a slow day and if that's the case I'll go ahead and take all this back off and uh, get the hood silencer done and I know I'm gonna have to almost cut all the way around this for the hood silencer but I want to tuck it up in there enough to where you can't really tell that anything's even here uh, the only reason I took the hood silencer out is because this rides so close to the hood I needed that extra space otherwise when I shut my hood, the top portion rode too close and I couldn't close my hood. So that's how tight the space is here. But, uh, and I've uh, did a little bit of reworking of the plastic here just to make everything lay down nice and smooth on top of the air filter. But once you get everything set up right, then the hood closes. We don't have any excessive gap or anything besides the normal horrible charger gap but uh, everything looks nice and factory until you uh, go to pop the hood and, and by the way this is my 21 scat pack uh, wide body I really love this thing beautiful car so uh, anyway we will uh, continue the rest of this when I get a little bit more free time like I say I think with the here within the next day or two I'll be able to finish it out box this in add my hood uh, silencer or whatever you want to call it back in and we'll get it trimmed around this so it'll tuck in nice and neat and look factory so that's uh, basically the quick rundown of the uh, cold air kit 
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe, share, click the little bell. Uh, the part number will be down in the description for this kit if you decide you want to try to tackle it yourself. But I look forward to the uh, next video where I'm going to go a little bit more in depth on uh, measurements and stuff like that. So, guys, appreciate it. Have a good one.